welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a fun two-parter video. So during the first half, we are going to be trying to finish my sketchbook as quickly as possible. I think I'm gonna title this something like, oh, finishing my sketchbook in a week. We're gonna try to finish my sketchbook, do a lot of fun draw with me, a little bit of a voiceover here and there. The second part of the video, we're gonna be doing a tour because I am almost completed with my Nina Cause for sketchbook. The whole second part of the video is just gonna be this. <laughs> I worked on this from January 5th, 2023 until now. So it's been over a year. So I think there's a lot of fun progress in here. I had such an enjoyable experience working in here. I think it's like the perfect size, favorite kind of paper to draw in. So yeah, this is also a little bit of a mini plug for the Nina Cause for a sketchbook. And yeah, let's get into it. You guys see that? It's a whisker. Look over. Careful, you cannot just launch yourself. He's probably a little upset that I have a bunch of stuff here. Okay, look outside. Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to the first of many, many voiceovers in this video. On Instagram, I did a little poll and everyone said they would prefer listening to voiceover, so that's what you're gonna get. Um, I might keep in some of the ambient drawing noises because that's what I really like to listen to when I watch these kinds of videos, but I do live in New York City, so there is a lot of like blaring sirens, so I'll probably like cut, cut that out. Um, and then another thing I wanted to say before we get into like me talking about art um, is I'm sorry about the echo in my microphone. Some of you might not be able to tell what I'm talking about, um, but I have a really echoey room and sometimes when I listen to the audio back, the echo just really bothers me. So I might just have to get like a better mic. So if it bothers you, I do apologize. Um, but yeah, let's get into talking about the art and the drawings. Um, I had so much fun uh, recording and filming this video. I've also just been having a lot of fun sketchbooking in general. Uh, the more I sketchbook and I think just like doing this tour and revisiting my old work in this sketchbook, um, it just really reminded me how useful sketchbooking is to me as an artist. I feel like so much of the growth and experimentation happens here and it's just so important for me to have a space where I can just like try things out without um, feeling like I need to make something super presentable because my job is so dependent on social media and people like wanting to like and buy my work. Um, I think that really holds me back sometimes when I'm trying to learn and try new things. Cause I'm like, oh, well, no one's gonna like this. Uh, but it's still so important to experiment and follow your curiosity as an artist. Um, so I'm just grateful I have a space that I can do that. And I feel like people really like looking at sketches too. So anyways, I'm just grateful for my sketchbook and all the work I've done in here. Um, my cat Rover, it's an hour and a half away from his lunchtime, so you might hear him meowing at me in the background. Um, but yeah, throughout this sketchbook, uh, sketchbooking video, on this first day, I do a lot of work with color pencils and whatnot. Um, but later on in this video, you're gonna see me really whip out my fountain pens, cause that is something I've gotten into within like the past two weeks. And I'm having the time of my life using fountain pens. And I really think the fountain pen is what helped me finish this sketchbook so quickly because I just drew so fast with it. But anyways, here I am experimenting a little with using pencil as line art and using like a color pencil as like the color fill. And right here, I'm doing a study of Yusuke Yonezu, who I got a sticker sheet from at a stationery shop. And I just like really, really love how he uses color and pencil as line art. I just think it's so fun and soft. And then I wanted to kind of experiment with that, experiment with that even further. So I drew three different rovers and colored them all differently. And while I don't like love the finished product of any of them, it's just experimentation. I think that's like the most fun part about having a sketchbook. It's like, I even wrote this on the previous page after I was finished. I wrote like, I don't even, I don't have to be the best. I don't even have to be good. And I think that is just really liberating for me as someone who is kind of a recovering perfectionist. Um, and it just helps me, yeah, just not have, not be in my head so much when I'm drawing. Like it just doesn't have to be good at all. And I think that really helps um, the ideas flow and the sketchbooking happen more organically. So now we are approaching day two where I got this 
Lamy Safari pen in the mail and I just like fell in love with this fountain pen. So I have been wanting to get into fountain pens for a while now. I purchased one or two, but when I tried the Lamy Safari, I fell in love. Um, it's just such a nice pen. It's a beginner fountain pen actually, and I bought it for around $25 and I would highly recommend it. Any pen that was cheaper than this, I just really didn't like and I'm just not ready to spend like 50 bucks on a pen right now. Um, but if the Lamy Safari really got it done, this is actually the ink cartridge that it came with. I didn't put in any special ink and I just loved this blue. Um, the fountain pen itself was just such a joy to draw with. I just thought it was like so magical. I know that sounds really cheesy, but it just like, it's so precise, but the way the ink flows from the tip, it's so like viscous, I guess. So it has like some of the variability and unpredictability of paint but the control of a super precise pen. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. If you have drawn with a fountain pen, you know what I mean. Um, and I just had so much fun. You can see that um, where all of like my downstrokes or where I kind of linger a little bit more, the ink tends to pool. So the blue comes out a bit darker and I just loved that effect. Um, yeah, I had so much fun and I was also really shocked how fast I drew with this pen. Um, like I know the footage is on like two times speed, but typically it takes me a lot longer to draw, but like the ideas and the images were just like flowing out of my pen. I got into such a like a flow state um, and I, I was just having a lot of fun, I think. So yeah, the next uh, spreads are all gonna be with fountain pen and I just like did them so quickly. Um, I'm still really shocked with like the speed with which I completed the sketchbook just because of the fountain pen. And during the tour, you'll see a lot of my spreads are kind of like, not empty, but when I was using the fountain pen for some reason, like I just had the urge to fill in every little gap um, and it just came together really quickly. Something about the fountain pen um, just like really changed stuff for me. So I had a super, super fun time doing this. Um, in the next spread, I end up getting a different ink and I got a converter for that pen. So I like filled in the pen with like a very special color changing ink. Um, if you didn't know, all the different, all these different inks have a bunch of fun different properties. There are these things called shading inks. Shading is a property where there's like light and dark that you can kind of see here in the ink. And there's also a property called sheening where ink kind of has like a shiny sheen to it. Uh, there's also dual shading inks. The ink I'm gonna show you in a little bit is a dual shading ink where the ink will look like it'll change color from two different colors. So it's really just like a very magical world that I, I'm so excited to explore further. Um, I think the something I've been like listening to because I've been watching a lot of like fountain pen videos and stuff is that it takes time to figure out uh, what you like with a fountain pen. So I'm still like in that journey um, because there's so much customization available with the fountain pens because there's so many different kinds of nibs, first of all, which is that little silver part at the top of the pen. Um, there are different nib thicknesses. There's different nibs that um, give you like more of a calligraphy style. Um, there's like stub nibs. And this is a nib I like a lot. That's just like, it gives you, you know, one line weight. Um, but there's ones that like change and vary. I think it's called a fude nib that I, I also really wanna try. Um, and then it, all the pens write a little bit differently, like different pens from different companies have nibs that vary slightly. Um, the inks change everything too. Some inks are like thicker, some inks flow a lot faster. Um, so as you can see, like it, it's a pretty magical world and I'm, I'm really excited to get into it. And something else I've been thinking about is just like, there's so much in the world that I can learn and get into. Like every time I discover something new that I love, I'm like, wow, life is so cool. <laughs> like if you didn't know this year, I have been working a lot in my Hobonichi and I've just been journaling and having so much fun. And this is something like I didn't really know about and I didn't know I would like so much. But now that I do it, I'm like, wow, I can't believe like I didn't have this in my life and I just like just discovered it and it's like been so much fun. That's also how I feel about fountain pens. I'm like, wow, life is crazy that like this didn't exist to me before and now it does. Like I wonder like what else I can discover and like be interested in. <laughs>
So this is the dual shading ink I was telling you about. It's from Sailor Monyo. And I will say I do really like it. The shading is even more pronounced in this color than the blue color I was just showing you, the Lamy Blue cartridge. Um, and when you kind of like color in certain blocks of color, you really see that like green and purpliness come through. I don't know if it's coming across as much on camera, but when you do stare at it like in person, you can see there's like bits of green under the purple. So I do think this ink is super cool, but that being said, I think I'm just a blue person. Like I, I as I was drawing with this, I was like pretty, but I wish I got blue. Um, and this is something I learned recently. I didn't know you can buy bottles of ink just in like mini sample forms. Um, I thought you just had to get the whole bottle, but I've been watching more and more like stationary YouTube fountain pen videos. And I've heard one YouTuber talking, I forget who it was, but they were just talking about how like, they have certain rules set up for themselves uh, for buying ink where they were like, yeah, I make myself go through two little sample vials of an ink before I commit to the bottle because I only want to have like inks in my collection that I really love. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I just didn't realize you could like purchase little sample bottles online. So that is what I'm going to be doing from here on out. So I do have like a big bottle of, you know, Manyo, Fuji Sailor ink. So if any of my friends in New York want to come <laughs> take some of this ink from me, like feel free to like come bring your little vial. <laughs> um, but I still do like it. But I think from here on out, I really want to get those little samples so I can experiment more and just be sure I really like something. Um, Cause yeah, getting through the ink bottles like does take some time. I think it'll like help. I think I'll go through them a little bit faster because I do draw with it. Um, but yeah. That's something I learned. So if you didn't know, you don't have to get the whole bottle. <laughs> you can just get little vials of it. Hello, hello. Today is February 6th. Um, I'm not even sure what day it is in the challenge, but I'm confident I can, I think it's day four. Um, I can finish today. I'm very, very confident. I have like half of the spread here and like a little bit of pages to fill in as well. And then just one lap. Cause this is like the thick cover page. So I'm not gonna draw on this. In my next video, I'm gonna be doing like a really big stationary haul. I will show you this right now. Cause we're gonna use it today. I got the Pilot Kakuno. This is a fountain pen that is uh, very beginner friendly. It is a bit cheaper than my Lamy Safari. My Lamy Safari goes for about 25 to 30, and this one goes anywhere between like 12 to 15. Okay, so. Rover. Rover. Look at his little face. Look at his little face. Excuse me. Excuse me. Here's the Pilot Kakuno. Let's do a little unboxing. So my review of this Pilot Kakuno pen is it's fine. I think maybe I would have liked it in a smaller nib. If you didn't know, um, the nib sizes come in like extra fine, fine, medium. They don't really describe them in the same way that like other pens are like a 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Japanese nibs are different than Western nibs. So a Japanese company's fine will be different than like a German company's fine. So I wanted the nib to be a little bit thicker so I could see, you know, more shading in the ink cause more ink goes down. So you can see like more of the light and dark of it, but I didn't love this pen. I think I'm just so committed to the Lamy Safari that I'm just like, when I tried this one, I was like, eh. I will say though, for the price point, I think it's excellent. So I do think it's a great beginner's pen. Um, but if you are willing to pay an extra $10, I would recommend you get the Lamy Safari over this one. Um, for some reason, the drawing feel, like it was fine, the ink was flowing, like everything was working as it should. Um, and it wasn't too uncomfortable to hold. But the, for some reason, like when I was drawing the lines, the lines wouldn't go where I wanted to wanted them to go exactly. I don't know if that makes any sense, but when I was drawing with the Lamy Safari, it was like an extension of my arm. Like everything, all the lines were going exactly where I wanted them to. And like, I feel like I just wasn't connecting <laughs> with this pen as much, um, but it's still a great one and I would recommend it, but I would recommend the Lamy more. 
While we're on the topic of fountain pens and learning about new creative pursuits, this is a perfect time to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry professionals in fields like art, film, illustration, design, and more. This year is a great time to begin your learning journey on Skillshare to take your skills to the next level. And I love how there are so many classes on Skillshare for all kinds of creative interests. There's this one all about ink drawing and there's a great section on there on how to load up your ink into a fountain pen and just different techniques for sketching with ink. And I just found it super, super useful. Skillshare also designed learning paths that can help you progress your creative pursuits. They are hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order and they build upon one another. And there's learning paths in different experience levels from beginner to advanced. I am super interested in this one learning path in particular called Master Procreate Professional Techniques. And you start by mastering patterns in Procreate. It also teaches you how to do animations. And the last class is about building a pro workflow. And this one, I learned a lot of really cool tips on how to follow a client brief and how to translate your Procreate work onto a mock-up product, which I found very, very cool. So thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. The first 500 people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. I highly recommend it. I have used Skillshare for years now, and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful resource. All right, so I've successfully finished the sketchbook. I'm so, so excited um, to give you a tour of this. Before we begin though, uh, this is a Nina Cosford sketchbook. Um, the little stickers I have on here, this is from Radia, this is from Lee, this is my sticker. And unfortunately, I don't know the artist for this one. Uh, my friend Tiffany gave me this. And yeah, I do not know the artist, unfortunately. And yeah, let's just get in here. All right, so on this first page, you can see I started this on January 5th and it is February 6th today, so I worked on this for a little over a year. It's funny, here I wrote, the pen is too glidey on this smooth paper. Um, but later on, I work in this, I work in um, the pen a lot in the sketchbook, so I definitely like changed my mind about that. On this next page, I started working with more color pencil. Um, I remember at this point in time, I was feeling like kind of curious, I guess, about um, not lining certain parts of my work. So here I'm like, oh, let me not add a blue line around the ear. This page is so much fun. Lee and Tiffany came to visit me in LA back when I lived in LA. Um, and I remember we got these Caron Dosh Neo Color 2s um, and we went to the art store and we like played with them and then came home to my apartment and then we just like drew stuff. I'm pretty sure Lee drew this, which is so cute. Like I love having like other people's um, little doodles in my sketchbook. I think it's really special. And I remember this is really cool. I remember um, we were playing with like blending them and it was just like so interesting like how smooth they are. I wanna get back into using these pastels because I remember having like the time of my life with them. Um, on this page, I remember it had just turned Year of the Rabbit or what was about to become Year of the Rabbit. So I did like a piece here. I was taking a hand building class at this point. Um, so I was really excited about like all the different shapes I could do. I'm no longer in a ceramics class. So it's like kind of fun to look back at this. I really like this spread. I think it's like really fun. Um, this sketch of the cat here is like one of my favorite drawings I've done. Um, I used to have a different notebook for merch stuff um, that was like more of a, I guess, uglier sketchbook where I just did a lot of like messy merch design, but I started doing it more in here and just having one book for everything, which is kind of what I prefer now. But this little drawing I really, really loved and I ended up turning it into a t-shirt, but I first drew it on a tote bag, which is kind of cute. Like sometimes in the moment I'll draw something and I'll be like, eh. And then months later, I will revisit my sketchbook and be like, oh my God, this is such a good idea. Like maybe I should turn this into a t-shirt or something like that. This is actually a, drawing of a ceramic sculpture that Tiffany gave me from this like antique store. You can see like I was coloring it and then I was like, eh, I kind of like the lines. So I just left it. But that's the fun part about sketchbook. Like I never feel pressure to like finish things. It can just be unfinished and it's just purely for fun and purely for like experimentation purposes. Here you can see I'm still working with my Neo Color 2s. I like swatch them all, um, which was fun. I love like swatching in my sketchbook. And this is fun as well. I remember I actually made this sketch into a different piece. This is like more of a fully fledged piece, I guess, of my cats um, using the wax pastels again. It's funny I was using them so much in the beginning of the year, beginning of last year. I was really working with so much color in the beginning of 2023. It's kind of making me feel like, oh, I should probably do this again. 
Again, I'm doing a lot of Le Pen. I was really into the red Le Pen here. Um, back then I didn't have that many colors, but after this I got a green one. You can see me starting to use the green one. All right, this is kind of how I typically sketchbook now more and more. Sometimes I'm quite lazy and I'll just use one pen. This is also a Le Pen. I'm obsessed with Le Pen, as you can see. But here is where I um, was doing some more plush ideas. So I was like, oh, my first plushy idea, give me this. And my second idea is this. And I actually got samples of both of them, but he made it into production. Uh, they're still for sale now. This is the sample. It's funny to see like this became this, you know? This, um, I went to another cafe with my sister while she was visiting and um, she, she drew this. Sometimes like when I want to do like a thank you card or something, I will go back into my sketchbook, take photos of particular like line art sketches I like and then make them into like one piece and I'll just kind of like Photoshop it a lot, so. Oh, I love this spread. I don't know what it is about this spread. I think again, it's like the color pencil texture with like the thin lines from the Le Pen. I literally wrote, I like this. Um, yeah, I find it like so fun and sketchy and I love this color palette. I should go back to this. This is so cute. <laughs> I said, I cannot draw fish, which is funny, but again, this is a sketchbook. It's for experimentation. Um, I remember at this point I had gone back home to the East Coast because I was doing mocha. And I remember I drew these sketches um, at my parents' house. Me working on my mocha sign. I had like a sign of um, my, my letter, the letters of my name. Oh, and here's a drawing of Cheyenne because I think I was watching one of her streams. Yeah, more Le Pen. I'm obsessed with Le Pen. Um, I love this sketch of a cabbage. I think this is really funny. Oh, I ended up actually turning this into a painting. I love this. I took a picture of Rover in 0.5 um, and I like drew it twice here. And then this is a fun drawing. I really like this. This is a selfie I took of me and my other cat Cosmo. And then I ended up turning this into a full illustration. This is another piece that I ended up turning into an illustration. Um, and I called it like Night Garden, which I still really like this piece. I never ended up turning into a print or anything, but maybe I will one day. And this is a comic I never made because I was thinking about like how nice outside smell is. So I was like, oh, outside smell. I remember on this day, I did not want to draw, but I felt like kind of pressure to um, add to my sketchbook because I hadn't drawn in a while. Um, but I love this. I think this is so pretty. It's funny because when I made this, I remember being like, oh, don't want to draw on. This is so bad. But looking back at this, I'm like, wow, this is so pretty. Oh, here I was saying, oh, I should probably update my Patreon tier images. This is probably like me trying to come up with like thumbnail sketches for a, a full piece. Or blue Le Pen. I feel like I exclusively worked in Le Pen for like over half of the year, which is crazy. I really liking how my style is developing. Um, and I feel like that comes through not so much in my illustrations, my like fully finished and rendered illustrations, but like my drawings. Um, I love these like wiggly lines and um, yeah, something about the lines I, I, I like a lot, like wobbly lines. <laughs> I drew Cosmo in um, his harness because here at this point, um, I was thinking and doing my preparations for my big cross country move. So we were practicing like putting Cosmo in his harness because when he was on the plane, we put them in little harnesses. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited about my bunny plushie, which I do think this could look so cute. I made like really, really cute um, like mock-ups for it. And the manufacturers just like did such a terrible, terrible job. I have the most hilarious photos of like what the samples look like on my Patreon. So if you're curious or if you're a patron, you can go look at that. Um, it's comical. It's so funny. Oh, here I did a little bit of experimentation with Posca pens, which I rarely work with, but I remember I was feeling kind of art. Yeah, I said I'm in an art slump. <laughs> um, but using the Posca pens was really fun. They are acrylic markers, if you don't know. And it was just so much thicker than what I'm used to. And there's a fun, um, variability in the lines that come out. I don't know if you can tell, but I think it was like just fun for me to work with. So if you ever feel like you're in a bit of an art block, um, I highly recommend just like using a material or a pen or a marker, or just something that you like typically never reach for. Um, and sometimes like, just like the novelty of using something new helps me a lot at least. Oh, I love this. 
Christmas. Uh, so my mom's peonies were blooming every year around May. Uh, my mom has these like huge peony bushes outside her house. Um, and so for like a week or two, she just like has peonies everywhere. Um, so she sent us some really beautiful photos of them and I wasn't home, so I like couldn't enjoy them. Um, but I got to get some really great reference photos. Um, and my mom loves peonies. And I ended up, ended up actually um, gifting her like the painting I did from this. I think I was preparing for some shop update of some kind, so I was kind of figure out like the unit price of something. This is from a sketch previously in this book that I later turned into this thumbnail, which I later turned into a finished piece. I really see myself improving. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I really see um, a lot of improvement so far in this sketchbook. This sketch I actually ended up putting onto the cover of our 2024 calendar. Yeah, I really wanted to do some like emo <laughs> drawing piece of me like crying into a river. I never ended up doing it. Um, I never ended up finishing it, but it's fun seeing like the drawings for it. Um, and then Robert and I went to Disneyland before we left LA because his family was in town. Um, so I was just like drawing some self portraits of uh, some portraits of us at Disney. And this is after I moved. So there was actually quite a big gap of me working in the sketchbook because, funny story, I very stupidly forgot to pack my sketchbook in my luggage because I was like, oh, I should give the movers as much stuff as possible because like we're paying them so much to move our things. So I'm just giving them all my art supplies. And then the movers took so long to drop the stuff off. So I wasn't able to work in here until July 24. So like that's over a month of not working in here. I was like, oh, I need to practice drawing people in outfits more. And like, I definitely do. Like the proportions are quite funny. I've said I'm using my beloved 0.3 pen. Sometimes I really love working with a very thin line weight, like 0 0.3, 0 0.25 is too skinny for me, but 0.3 is perfect. Um, oh, this is cute. This is a drawing of my friend Sarah's cat jungle. Uh, but yeah, I was just like kind of decide like what I wanted the cover to look like. And then I met my friend Sarah's kitten Miso, who's now, he's like a lot bigger now. Um, I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, he's so cute. So I did like a little spread of him because I, I just thought he was so adorable. Here I'm working on the September Patreon benefits and I wanted to do something frog and toad themed because like I was so excited about fall. Uh, my friend Sarah also has a cat named Tofu as well. And she's like very floofy. And I wrote like, I like how loose this is. Um, oh, I remember I showed myself drawing these on camera, which may be why it's so sparse. Sometimes I feel super, um, not anxious, but like when I draw on camera, sometimes it's hard for me to like make a full spread just cause I'm like so self-conscious of someone watching me. I started to use the Tombow Funosuke pen more. Um, I'm finally migrating away from my Le Pen phase. And yeah, right to this day, I am still using the Tombow Funosuke a lot and I'm having so much fun with it. The Tombow Funosuke, my favorite one, is the one that has like a really hard um, nib. And I like that it's hard so I get a lot of control, but I also get like some line variability here and I just had so much fun drawing with it. Oh, here I was working on my October Patreon print. So I was thinking of like spooky things to draw. Oh, I got washi made and I, I said, I kind of went off. <laughs> I love when I'm like actually happy about my work because I feel like I'm like my worst critic. So it's nice to like actually be happy about it. Um, this spread is just kind of random. I got new shoes. It's so funny. I have this problem where I cannot draw the same thing twice. And I was like, let me draw two pairs of shoes. Look at the size difference. So on this page, I did a lot of like, um, I went back to my Le Pen. So I'm having like red and blue. And I think it looks quite fun together. Uh, I love this drawing of Rover. I think it's so cute. This is fun. I was kind of sad about this because I had so much fun on this day. I remember like, just like having a lot of fun. But yeah, I was kind of sad because I was like, wait, um, I'm having so many spooky ideas all of a sudden, but it was October 19th. So it was kind of too late to make anything for Halloween. I think I drew this on camera as well. I was having a lot of fun drawing witches during October. Um, this is definitely a reference of a plushie I saw on Pinterest. I'm forgetting the name of it though. So I apologize. I didn't um, write uh, the artist there. I will have health insurance. I was really manifesting it for myself. Oh, if you can't tell, October is my favorite month. I love spooky season um, and it's fun. I like that it's reflected in my work. I feel like you can tell how much I love October. Oh, I ended up actually turning this cute um, apple, holding a sunflower into a sticker for November. 
Oh, on this day, I started working a little bit more with this marker I never use, Zig Writer for Vellum. I don't know, I got it at Michael's. And so I was thinking of doing like a snowy flower moment because the weather was getting colder. Um, and I ended up turning that into this painting right here. Um, I said, it's not giving. <laughs> Oh, I really like this. Again, I, I'm just such a lover of the Tombow Fudenosuke now. I used to be a hater, but yeah, I wrote, I am a Tombow Fudenosuke convert. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm like using Le Pen less and less and I'm like working into this now. Um, this is funny. I, I think I got rejected from Mocha LOL. Um, I announced this on Instagram, but if you didn't hear and you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm actually going to Mocha guys. I got off the wait list um, through a lottery system and I'm quite, I, I don't think of myself as a lucky person, but yeah, I, I won the Mocha lottery. <laughs> These are funny. These are some drawings I did because I wanted to make a sticker. Um, I ended up not doing this. This drawing, I, um, you probably, if you follow me, you probably see me in this jacket, but I had so much fun um, drawing the gingham. And again, this is kind of like the opposite of what I was working on in the beginning with like, you know, it was like color with like the lines on the inside. This was like lines on the outside, color on the inside. <laughs> This is like more of a planning thing. I don't do too much planning in this, but I was thinking about like um, shop ideas for next year. And here um, it's some more merch design. I was trying to think about like a tote bag or maybe a new desk mat I can make. Um, so that's just this work here. And here is where I was thinking about um, making planner stickers, which I ended up doing. Um, I will be releasing those mid February. Oh, I had just gotten my first lucky cat. I still only have one, but I was like, oh, I should make um, a lucky rover cat. So I made that into a sticker. And then here's some more develop sketches um, for my Onigiri sticker sheet. I ended up turning this into the sticker for February. I was thinking of doing like a cat emoji sticker sheet. I didn't, I didn't end up doing that, but I put like some little emojis on the bottom row. This is just more, a little bit more merch design. I was trying to think of like, um, like a long sleeve shirt to do maybe later on this year. This spread is hilarious. I was like, oh, let me do like 2024 vision board and I'll like share it with everyone. It'll be so cool. I literally did not. <laughs> you can see how much I committed to making my vision board. I think this spread is super fun. So yeah, I did like a cat sticker sheet as well as like a bunny relaxation sticker sheet, um, which might be my favorite one I made. Just more little pen drawings. Um, I kind of wanted to explore a bit more and see what, like what, oh, a bunch of like buildings in Brooklyn would look like if like big cats live there. This is quite recent as well. I did this on January 30th. And I, it's funny, I wrote, I should do a finishing my sketchbook in a week video. And I like wrote the title out here. On here, I'm using a Micron PN, which I got recently. It stands for plastic nib, I think, because I'm like kind of a Micron hater, but I really like the plastic nib. Um, and I got the idea of doing like a really big dragon with a cat riding on it. And it ended up turning into a fully finished piece um, that I posted on Instagram that I, I'm so happy with. It's one of my most favorite things I made in a really long time. So this uh, whole spread I did uh, when I called Cheyenne the other day, we had a very cute art date. But yeah, a lot of Tombow Fudenosuke stuff. I love how wonky this little cat up here looks. I also did this on Call with Cheyenne. So these are the spreads that we did together. So I can't believe we're almost at the end. Um, I remember after doing this, my hand really hurt because of like, I feel like you have to press so hard with color pencil to get it to show up. We did these together as well. And this page, this is where the fun really starts. <laughs> I've probably talked about it in this video already, but I've had just so much fun working with fountain pen. I feel like this this spread I did so quickly. Um, I think it's just so cute. This spread again, super fun. I love this blue. Sailor Manio Fuji ink, um, which I like, but I just, I love blue more. You can see down here, I think I'm just a blue person. <laughs> this we did today. I worked using my Pilot Kakuno with black. I had never drawn with like a black fountain pen before, but I don't think I like working with black as much as I do other colors. And this is the last page. Yeah, I could have filled this out more, but I got kind of tired to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, this is the last page and that is my completed sketchbook tour. I hope you enjoyed and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Bye.
All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. I forgot to film an outro of like my face talking, so you'll have to rewatch this clip of me drawing again. But thank you so much for watching this super long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful to you in some way. Um, shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out um, in the link in my description. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.